I am going to take you through today how to make a dental STL as a solid model so that you can 3D print it. I'm doing this through Mesh Mixer because it is free, it is easy, and it's pretty quick. There are a heap of different ways you can make a solid model or a hollow model. I'm going to link down below a solid model tutorial that an awesome dentist called Dr. Andrew Ip made. I personally always make solid models because I like it that way and it's very accurate and I don't have problems when I do it that way. I fix something that's not broken. You make stuff out of ExoCAD model maker sometimes as well, but not everybody has ExoCAD. Most of your scanners typically will have a model making software and Medit also has a model making software that's free to download. But enough talking and let me show you how to get it done. So I'm going to use this mock-up that I'm in the process of getting ready for my patient. First and foremost, I'm going to get rid of all this crap hanging out around here. So we go to the select tool. You can do little bits, little bits, little bits, but honestly, I just drag it across, loop it around, delete, and then just check that I haven't wiped out anything that's important. If you export it like this and, ooh, that's not right. If you export it like this and you don't do anything about it, what you'll find is that it just won't print. It will fail. You have to solidify it so that the printer can process what needs to happen. These last little bits, but that's fine. Look, at the end of the day, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to sort itself out throughout the process anyways. Next, we're going to highlight the whole model. With highlighting the model, you can literally double click. <laughs> Amazing. If you keep clicking it, eventually it will auto highlight the whole thing. I mean, it should normally, but apparently it doesn't want to cooperate. See how when I click, it's like picking each one as a whole unit as the individual files. When you click this to make it the whole model, it'll only do the individual piece. So to circumnavigate that and make it quicker when you've got like particularly multiple units, I will circle it to select. Normally you have to do it twice. And you can see how it's orange all the way around, everything's selected. So what we're then going to move to is go edit, extrude, let it think about it, change the end type to a flat offset. And what that means is that you're going to get a flat base. We're going to move it so that it is negative. I'm going to use plane cut to drop this down more, but for now that looks pretty good. Don't worry too much about these little bits, that will sort itself out as well in the next phase. So we're going to accept that and then we move down to edit. In edit I'm going to hit make solid. Now that looks pretty, <laughs> pretty average. Um, but the way we increase the fidelity, we go solid type, take it to accurate, that will improve it, I'll show you what it looks like, but it's still not 100%, like it still doesn't look great. So you then move into change cell size. You can't make it any less than 0 0.1 I find, like if I went 0 0.01 it'll default back to what it originally was, so we'll make it 0 0.1 and it will accept that. Whoa, what the heck? Don't change that. <laughs> Offset distance should be left. So we've changed the solid accuracy. Um, we've changed the cell size of that and we've changed the mes mesh density cell size. So hit update. It takes a little bit of time to think about it because there's a few facets that it needs to make work.
you can even in this part, if you had, say, for example, a patient who had um, Invisalign attachments on that you want to take off, you could digitally just polish it up. If it goes blank at this part and you can't see anything, just move the model around and it will pop up. It's just sometimes it won't show back up. We hit accept and then there we are. So you could leave it at that, but if you don't have a printer where you can sit the base through the base plate, and if you have a printer like a Sega, you know what I mean, um, you can just make that happen with this. But if you have a different one where it will put supports on the base, this is the time to do a plane cut so that you're not spending the next three hours printing a model. The easiest way to do this is literally just cut across. Yep. And look, that's pretty chunky, but you get the idea. We hit accept. And because it's a solid model, you now don't see the little files on the internal there. And that is good enough. That's perfect. But if you really want to take it to the next level, which, you know what, that's what we're here for. We are going to go to Sculpt. I like Bubble Smooth. Don't go anywhere near down the bottom here because you don't want to be smoothing out the gums. Um, but you can smooth around this edge part. So I wouldn't worry too much about changing the strength, but I will change the size. Drop it down a little bit. Not too much, but like just enough so that it's easy to isolate it. And you can see how it gets nice and smooth. I know that it has that protrusion there and it's kind of weird. You could delete it if you wanted to, but I find that the printer's not going to actually print that. Because it's not really, like, it's not attached, so it's one of those areas. But that is one of the reasons why at the start you do clean up the sort of scattery aspects so that you avoid having too many of those little protrusions or artifacts. And yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's straightforward, very easy. Whenever I have issues with other softwares, I always end up defaulting back to Mesh Mixer um, because it's very crude. But for that reason, it just works. Smileify, for example, when they first released, you would export the STL and they actually recommended that you should wrap and use Mesh Mixer for it. One other tip I would say is if you find that with the model, when you make it solid, if you find that the front surface is like rippling or it doesn't look like a tooth should. So for example, you're not getting that texture, you're getting sort of like just this weird, I, like I would literally say it kind of looks a bit like a fingerprint striation. That means that the layer of the model, the layer of the tooth file is not thick enough. So it might be a case that you need to just adjust it a tiny bit in your designing software to allow for that or alternatively, you could um, take your waxing brushes and shrink the original model so that you're not having, like shrink the pre-op that you're doing the mock-up over. So then there's more space between where your mock-up shell starts and where your original model starts. And that generally fixes the problem and you don't get that weird striation anymore. Yeah, so that is what it looks like. And then literally all I would do is hit export, type in whatever you want to type in, and there you have it, your very own solid <laughs> 3D model to be printed on any printer. And you will get a really high fidelity and quality model.